Welcome back to another episode of Just My Baby Daddy. It's your boy AJ. It's the boy Coach Eli. Come on, man. <laughs> that shit sounds horrible. Hey, man, I'm the not changing. The, the boy Coach Eli. I got you. <laughs> I'm the boy today. I'm from Hamlin, oh. North Carolina, in the, born and raised in the sticks. I'm going to pretend like I'm from the city instead of the oh, country. Man. Nah, Come yeah, because in the country, they call you boy. It's a whole different meaning down there in Hamlet. Got the white boys calling you boy. Nah. Oh, God. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start that. Kind of true. Yeah. Don't but start today, it. But today, we have the founder of the dad blog, <laughs> the founder of Create Dope Humans. And we found out earlier a voiceover specialist, Mr. <laughs> Anthony, on the podcast today. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good, bro. I'm real good. I appreciate that uh, voiceover edition. I'm a, I'm gonna start adding that to the resume. I feel like. No, you really hey, should. You, you really should. should. Uh, hey, somebody, you basically got acting credits. Yeah, yeah. Somebody told me I got a show voice. Actually, it was my wife. She said, "Some for some reason, when you get on the microphone, you act like you ain't ever been there before." <laughs> she, That's she funny. Said, I got. A, she said I got a voice that I just change up. So I, I'm regular all day. Then when I get on the microphone, I'm hey, how you, how's everybody going? And stuff like that. <laughs> Don't ever do that again. Oh, so you don't talk like this normally? Yeah, I do. Don't, don't do I that guess again. I thought so. <laughs> well, look, well, look, no, no, tell you what, no, don't say what. No, for us, no. don't, don't, don't give us the, hey. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't give us that one. Yeah, no, 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 y'all don't get that one. Just cool. All good. <laughs> yeah, what's that? That's, that's yeah. what, uh, late night radio? Yeah, we don't need that. Yeah, 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 yeah. What well, is that quiet storm voice? We don't, we don't need that one. That's what I was waiting for. I've graduated from the quiet storm. You're right. Yeah. So oh, that's funny. We're start you off the same way we start off every episode by asking you, what does it mean to you to be a father? <clears throat> oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, simple. Uh, a manager of things. Mm. Like a director of things, a, um, a specialist of things, a, a guiding light, all that kind of stuff. It's, um, it's, a, it's a heavy job when you think about it. Um, and if you do it exactly right, it's a heavy job. So I find myself now kind of doing a bunch of different stuff, <clears throat> planning for long term, planning for short term, being like doctor for a little while, being therapist yeah. for a little while, doing all of these kind of things and still at the same time, just trying to figure out my own my own self. So when you ask me, like, what is what is a father? It's just whatever you need to be in the current situation. What does what do the mo what does the moment call for at that at that time? Gotcha. You need to be a doctor or what? So you gotta you gotta be whatever you gotta be to get the job done. So, so what, what do you mean by doing it right though? No, well, because, exactly right. Exactly yeah, right. yeah, exactly right. Because you need a certain level of foresight. I feel like when you when you become a father and some stuff you got to you got to figure out, like you got to examine yourself. Like for me, I'm like, all right, what's some things that are that that I don't necessarily what what traits that I don't necessarily um, want my kid to have that I that I have now, maybe. And, and when do you need to interject and start to um, start to correct that stuff? Sometimes it needs to be earlier. So you need to be involved very early. But. Do you need to be involved at five years old, six years old, 10 years old? When do you let stuff ride? Like, um, I know when I was growing <laughs> when I was growing up, like talking back was a thing, right? And it's probably a thing now, but we got the whole gentle parenting, you know, statue thing happening here. Uh oh. <laughs> Y'all know I don't know what we <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. This will be, be good. This will be good. Hey, can't, can't, be good. Can't, lock, can't lock me in with everything now. <laughs> I ain't part of that week. <laughs> so if you so if you like talking back was a thing now i feel like now i'm not in the gentle parenting category but i take from some gentle parenting like practices i feel like okay so if you have a kid that's kind of talking back like when do you when do you nip that my mom would say early two years mm -hmm. old boom early but i would say why early why not wait you know five six years and just offer a couple corrections along the way and and let that runway kind of um, go out a little bit before you begin to make those instant corrections. Cause it's too late. I, I, I don't know. No. If you see it, but e e Eli is burning up on the inside. Oh, let's this. go. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I can <laughs> see it. Most He's people are. Most people. No, are. no, 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 no. The only question I have. Okay. 
to actually start a dialogue is what constitutes talking back? Because here's the, th- here's the, to me, the common phrase for any conversation that starts with talking back is why from but a child. That's, that's it is. That is it. I mean, now, if, you, if you ask my mama, anything that you say that comes after a sentence that she said, it's talking back. Yeah. It's talk, it's talking back. So you're saying anything from 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 an old school perspective, anything, right? Mm-hmm. See, AJ, I'm not burning up because here's here's my philosophy. I give you one. Now, if you follow <laughs> that question up with a one, now I kind of revert back. So with each why, we're gonna have to have a, a, a more stern conversation. But I, would, I would challenge that and say why, why, especially if you have a four year old. Mm-hmm. Or a three year old. I have a, a nine year old now. That's asking why. Like, what is his why rooted in? That's that would be my question. Because he's a, he's a little old grown man <laughs> that has a. He really uh, is. Uh, <laughs> he has a full. He has a full <laughs> grasp. Like we always joke, like yo, this boy's been here before. Yeah. Because his questions are not childlike questions. Mm-hmm. They're more mature. And some of his questions force you to think. Now, me, this is where I kind of get to the point where, look, man, it's about time for you to shut up because <laughs> he might ask me a question that I really actually got to think about. Yeah, and I actually sure. have to process and that's my awesome. answer. And that's awesome. But <clears throat> outside of why, now, if you talk, start telling me I don't want to or I don't need to do this or um, I want to do. Now, see, now that's when I say. Now you're starting to get a little bit disrespectful because if I'm the one that's providing, then I'm doing what's in your best interest. Don't keep questioning me like I'm like I'm your friend. That and is, I'm, I'm I've not. heard that. I've heard that. The, but it, it sounds like you have a different perspective. I want to hear this. I absolutely have a different perspective. And it comes with. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> It comes with up. Where are you going? No, oh, no, no, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna fry you right now because I'm really. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, oh, this is gonna you. be so fun. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, this is how much time we got. All right, cool. hey. I right, bet. <laughs> Go for it. Now, the issue that I have, or not the issue, but the perspective that that I offer here, mm-hmm. is when somebody asks a question, the the whole thing is, is what is that question rooted in? And there's a certain energy that you get when somebody asks you a specific question. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> if I say, yo, why you got that old ass microphone picture in your background? You feel the energy on that. You know, I'm not very curious about that microphone. I'm trying to be funny. Right. Mm-hmm. But if a kid comes and he says, well, why do I have to do my homework? Number one, they're not root. They ain't been here before. They don't, they're not tacked. It. They're not tacked mm-hmm. like we are. They ain't been, they ain't been an adult. They haven't been trained for 15, 20 years and been working in corporate America and know how to talk to people and can get that across. They just got here. Your kid got here nine years ago. All right. Mm-hmm. LeBron was playing before that kid was before that kid was born. So yeah. now if you understand what is it rooted in, I think that that gives you a different perspective because now it's like, hey, why do I have to do that? And instead of the what I what I grew up on as the because I said so card. It mm-hmm. is the, this is why you have to do things. Because it sounds like a genuine question from a nine-year-old, somebody that has no experience at life. I'm not going to get offended because I know what that question is rooted in. And if I can offer you a perspective or an answer to your question that alleviates that question going forward, that's what I'm aiming to. That I'm, right there, though. I'm not trying to, I'm part. not trying to, I'm not trying to um, be ego driven. And that's why I feel like a lot of our parents were at least, at least kind of my generation. There's an ego that comes with, Hey, you don't question me because I am the bread. I'm the breadwinner. I do this. I do that. I, I feel like I was prepared to say all of that stuff too, until I took a step back and said, it really don't make no sense. He, he got a real genuine question. Mm-hmm. He like, why do I got to pick that up? I didn't do it. I'm triggered because my mom told me because I said so. <laughs> And my mom said, because I said so and I pay the bills, you do exactly what I say. And there was nothing else. Now we're a little bit we're a little bit more intelligent now. We, we're able to dissect situations a little bit better. So from that approach, you can honestly tell what the question is, uh, what the question is rooted in. If it's rooted in curiosity or if it's rooted in sarcasm. Hmm. The part about you said alleviating the fact that I'm asking that question again. 
that be the issue because they are kids. And you know what? These little fuckers are going to ask that same question again tomorrow. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that's the part, and that's where you get frustrated. That's, because, that's where the frustration comes in. <laughs> that's true. And that's where it's like, you know what? I gave you an answer before. Just do it now. Like that, and that's when that part starts to happen. So yeah. I get it, though. So, but, so how do you... Hold on. I just got to just... Do you believe in Montessori school? Um, I think so. So... It's, Explain to me what you like. What is special about a Montessori school for you? You basically let the kids do exactly what they want when they want to do it. Yeah, I hear that. So I I do believe it for certain personalities, absolutely. But it goes back to your question, like, what does fatherhood mean to you? Like, you have to you have to put you got to put them in the right positions. Like, that's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. You got to know exactly what your kid is, and you have to do a real deep dive on if Montessori school is for them. So with with gentle parenting, I didn't know we were going down this he route. Hardly say, he can't even hardly say he ain't never even said the term. It, it sounds so it sounds so soft. But how do you how do you find the balance of nurturing conversation? Let me say it that way or nurturing dialogue or um, inquisitiveness with structure and some level of discipline. If you're going to continuously um, be gentle. Yeah. So that sounds yeah. so wrong, but anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so your question is, is how can you be, how can you be gentle? Say that again for me. My how how do you be gentle and have um, structure or some semblance of structure mm. and institute some type of discipline. What type of yeah. discipline comes with gentle parenting? Yeah. So the thing, this is conceptual for everything. Like everybody really does want to be in a box. Like, everybody wants to be like, I am this, like I am a gentle parenter. I am not a gentle parenter. I am this, that does not exist. And there's no way for all of those. There's no way to be just one of those things. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is you take practices from certain areas. Like there's some things that are kind of gentle parenty esque, mm -hmm. but there's some times where you got to be like, Hey, cut it. That's it right now. And you got to turn it on and you got to be able to, to move back and forth. So there's no particular path that you should stay on, but it goes back to what I was saying. Like you have to be like a manager of all situations. Like you have to read the situation live while it's happening. And you have to be able to say, this is a moment where um, they are inquisitive and I need to address this. Or you need to say, and you got to be truthful with yourself or it gets haywire. Or you say, right. you know what? I need to figure out a way to shut these questions down. This is one thing that I do, honestly, when I just don't, I don't want to answer questions right now. And he's just asking questions. It's just like, hey, no more questions right now. Just not right now. We'll, we'll, we'll ask your questions later. So you say it gently. I say it clearly so he understands it. Yeah, without without it being like, "Hey, stop asking me questions," because I don't want to close that door ever. I need to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. I need to know what's happening when he's this age. I need to know what's happening when he's fifteen. So, so let me. This is for this is for the long. This is for the. I have long a day. random question. Go for it. Because what it sounds like, right? If we're honest and we're being effective, I'm not going to say we parent in in hypocritical fashion because we basically always combine in two different forms or multiple forms of communicating, mm -hmm. multiple forms of um, um, moving forward with our children as far as learning who they are, understanding what they need, understanding how to actually guide them in the right direction from what from our perspective. But gently sounds like you don't guide your children, you let them lead you. Why, do, why does gentle come out that way to you? Because, because he's an aggressive person. Uh, I'm yeah. not aggressive. I'm not aggressive. I know you're not talking. I hold on now. I'm the, the what, anyway. The word. <laughs> yeah, I see. Being from the country, I can't really say gent, gentle like that. Like it doesn't really enunciate well. But <clears throat> that wasn't really my question. Okay. All right. My <laughs> my question is. How often, in your experience, 
the do you have to actually put a little bass in your voice to get more your your point across because no matter how kind you are not kind i'm not saying kind but how whatever level of communication you're going to have with your children to kind of foster this communication there are at times as a father in my personal opinion that a little bass has to come from the diaphragm. I think that's where it comes from. I don't know mm -hmm. anatomy like that. But we have to actually change that tone of voice to kind of get get things moving in a different direction. Is that a misconception from this form of parenting or does that still happen? So uh, when you talk about, I guess, gentle parenting practices, mm -hmm. it is not the absence of discipline. Okay. It's not the, the absence of structure. It's the managing of all of those. So mm -hmm. there are situations that re that require like some base. It, it is mm -hmm. not about, it, it's not about just trying to be like nice. It's trying to be like effective. What is it? What is effective? Right. And, and what isn't like incredibly traumatized? Let's not escalate quickly. Cause that's what I think our mm -hmm. parents did. They escalated quickly. Oh, zero to a hundred real fast. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This, yeah. the, that's why I was saying at, at four or five years old, you're not allowed to ask questions when you grow up in like the nineties, mm -hmm. that's not a thing, but they should be able to ask questions now because questions get you answers and we have answers. We, we have all this information. We, we can articulate what we think. We have the history of our parents on our back and what mm -hmm. we liked and what we didn't like. So when you talk about gentle, anything, it's just the management of people the management of these humans that we've created. You need some bass sometimes. I got bass in my voice about 40% of the day. If I'm probably 50% of the now day. Now when you're doing your radio voice, we haven't <laughs> counted that. <laughs> if we if we take that one out, if we take that outlier out, we the rest 15 of the day. 15%. <laughs> <laughs> I'll chalk that one up to my wife. I'll take that one. <laughs> But that's but that's literally that's what it is. Like you have to put some base in sometimes. You have to adjust. Some people respond differently. Mm -hmm. Like I have a two year old daughter, she's about to be three, and I have about to be six year old. Right. Now when the six year old was about to be three, like his he was he was different. I can't talk to him the same way I talked to her, but you gotta look at things differently, you gotta manage it different ways. So mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes I may say, Hey, get over there because you didn't listen to me. I may have to turn on the very white you know, go in the lower register and do it. But I'm not afraid to do that. And I think that when you hear, when most people hear gentle parenting, they hear like soft getting pushed over. And really what it should be is just the management of humans. Like that's really what it is. The the step-by-step -step management of the certain situations. So I think that that's how everybody should look at this gentle parenting kind of phenomenon. I think. I've never heard. Yeah. I've never heard of that term. Um, but my bad, AJ. You ever heard of parenting? Nah, I, really? I, I I tune all that st type of stuff. Out. <laughs> oh my that's God. that. That's that. That's that new age. But now, because <laughs> now you're talking about, hey, be super emotional, and let me stop. Please, <laughs> no, no, I no, no. I do have a question though. Okay. Um, because fatherhood is centered around, if we're honest, the evolution of us, because. We're not the same as our children get older. We grow. We have to learn. We have we have to evolve as parents and as communicators, as again, like you said, as um, orchestrators or conductors or whatever we want to um, turn coin the term to be. Did you start out that way? Um, in, in your in your parenting, you know, in, in your parenting journey, or is this something that you've adopted over time? You know, I, I probably started this way. I think that most people kind of adopt it over time, mm -hmm. but I, um, I was also very intentional about it. I did every, I did it on purpose. Like okay. when situations arose, I, I understood I was present in that moment. Like mm -hmm. what are my options in this moment? When it was time to potty train or when he said why, like I literally saw that happen. Right. Like, out of body experience. And I said, what is the best way to kind of handle this situation? A, B, C, or D. So I was very intentional with it. And I think that a lot of people in the, in my generation likely are very intentional with it. And you sound like, like a lot of gas. No, what? It can't be. It can't <laughs> sound be. sound like a lot of gas for real. <laughs> it, it, it no way. Be. No way. Let me, let me. Go ahead. I, I'm listening. Can I, can I tell you why 
Go for it. Probably people are like this. So we're in this information age here. Mm -hmm. uh, We grew up or by the time we got to social media, uh, maybe what, 18, 19, 20 years old. Now we're 15 some years into social media that has kind of managed our entertainment. Now you have a whole gambit of information that comes through there. Right. You have relationships, you know, cats, dogs, all types of different entertainment type of things. All of that information has to get into your in, into your head. So as mm-hmm. I am getting this information from the tube or from the phone, those situations that are getting into my head are translating into real life. So I may have seen you know, 17,000 videos on, oh, this is a parent talking to his kid and you don't know those persons. So you have all types of critical opinions. Right and now that social media thing that you saw sticks in your head. And then when that situation happens to you, there's no way for you not to make that comparison there. So, so what I, what I can do and what I know people probably can do too is realize when that's happened, Hey, I've seen this somewhere before. What data did I have? This person did that. Did I like Mm -hmm. that? Let me relate it to when I grew up. This is how my mom did me with that. So now I have all these different data sources and I can make a decision based on the data that I just absorbed in those 15, 20 seconds. Okay. Well, that kind of leads into my question because it almost sounds like your answer would be social media, but I'm, I'm not sure or internet, but who would you say you got your parenting style from? Um, everybody. Well, who, was your, who, was your, who was your influence? Let's say that. Who was your your influence? Uh, everybody. My mom, my dad, my brother. I, I take <clears throat> all information, good, bad, positive, negative, and molded it into what I needed for a particular situation. So I, my mom was my mom was a single mom. Um, she raised me and my brothers. My dad wasn't in the picture. He was kind of in and out the picture at the times. Um, but I learned from both of those. So I learned all the expectations that my mom kind of had. I learned what she did, everything she tried to do. I learned what my dad tried to do. I learned what he was successful at, what he wasn't successful at. Same thing with my older brother. And it's just a matter of after getting so many different data sources, and you got social media, you got the internet, you have what people, what people write, like all this information is put together. And the only thing I have to do now is figure out what is for me and what is for my personality and what is for the legacy and things that I'm trying to leave with my family. So taking all that different information and molded it up into something that I can actually use to, to, to parent. Now, this is the first, AJ, because I've never heard anybody say they had they obtained information from the Internet to help them with their parents. There's I've never heard that. I've never heard that. But it makes sense. I mean, it's, tool, no it's tools you... there because because on, honest, just to be honest, I mean, what, what are we doing right now? No, no. I'm just saying up until recently. Yeah. Like, so say tw- 20 years ago, or my daughter, my oldest is 20, 20 years ago, we didn't have. We weren't going on the internet learning how to be parents. You know what I mean? 20 Especially, years ago, the internet pretty much just got here. <laughs> exactly. So it's not, it was trial and error. Everything was trial and error. Yeah. And so a lot of the things that I've personally learned along the way was from essentially failing at different points of for, especially from um, communicating because having my first child and her being a, a girl, for example, is different than now I'm raising a little boy and seeing the change in generations along the way or just change of society along the way with being a little bit more intentional with tonality or um, word choice. Um, Word choice is a really big one that I've had to learn along the way. So my question to you is, None of us come out as perfect parents, but what is the biggest challenge within you that you've had to address along the way to help you improve? Oh, everything that you just, everything that you just named, like how to talk. Mm-hmm. Um, number one is just kind of understanding like your, your audience, like who are you talking to? Like you, my oldest is about to be six. So mm-hmm. you're talking to a three-year-old. 
Do you know how a three-year-old thinks? You should talk to a four-year-old. Do you know what a four? Just when you get finished thinking that you got the three-year-old locked down and he turns four and he's a whole different person and so on and so forth. So I have to continue to adapt too. And I have to change like my language, my strategies, everything that you just named. The only difference is I have a bit of a cheat code because of people like you who suffered through it. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, listen, and listen, you, 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 you've went through it by yourself with no help. And then you have people that share these thoughts, share these insights with people like on this platform mm -hmm. and the, and the people that will come and listen to it, will get something out of it because they're here for that. And then they go and they be better people because of the information that you said, not saying that everything that you're saying is like for them, but in some way, shape or form, it will help mold them somehow. And if they're here, they're looking for something like they're not here on a whim or for an accident. No, for sure. So for it's, sure. it's it's because of those trial and errors and then being able to publish those trial and errors. That just uh, called me a test dummy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't appreciate it. He trying to get me back. That's all right, though. <laughs> I got some, I got some I got some shots in my clip that I'm about to unload. Test <laughs> test test W is so like that's 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 not it. It's something I'm gonna think about it before we get off of this uh before we get off of this car. I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you what you are. Wow. <laughs> I, I tell you what though, this this is really good because it, it leads to some of the questions that I wanted to ask, like mm -hmm. and especially when you're talking about how you getting your parenting skills, it made me wonder. How do you choose what you document, what you actually put out there as far as your parenting skills and what your comfort level with putting your children out there? Because yeah. that's something that a lot of people are like, uh, I, I don't, well, my daughter, I put my daughter out there. I don't, I don't know if mama put it out there like that, but I, I had it out there on the internet, you know, yeah. but it's, it's just something that really, yeah, that's really, a very, really, it's a very personal decision for people like to put their, their kids out on the internet. I mean, people don't want to do it. And I, I get it. People are like, we're creepy is uncomfortable for you. And it's like, Oh, I don't want people in there, but I have a much deeper, much deeper. Why? I think that the way that, um, the way that I've chosen to kind of live my life and the way my wife and I have chosen to live, I do think people like people do need to see this, like they need to yeah. see how we live. They need to see how we make decisions. They need to see how intentional our decisions are. And they need to see the output of those decisions, good, bad, or or ugly sometimes. So, and I had this talk with my wife in like 2018. I was like, hey, do you want to do this? Like, I am I want to like put this stuff out. Like I was just on fire for being like a dad early. I had no idea. I didn't. I don't have a lot of memories of like me and my dad doing a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. <clears throat> growing up. And when Taj got here, my son, like I thought he was going to come out and we was going to be going to the movie as soon as he got here, <laughs> playing football as soon as he got here. Like I forgot, like there's a ramp up stage. Like he ain't going to be able to do that for like five, six, seven years or something like that. But doing all of that kind of stuff, like it just, it, <clears throat> it, it, it helps. Like it helps people understand what they know, <clears throat> where they don't know it validates some stuff it helps them confirm some other things and it helps them see hey do i want that and then it's also like i'm i'm, I'm approachable i'm sociable so if you have questions which i a lot of people normally do like i'm okay saying hey this is how we do stuff it may not be for you but this is just a data point for you this is a data point for you to say oh well that person did that and this is me oh maybe i'll try that maybe i won't try that but it'll get the conversation going and and we don't necessarily have that a lot of that in the in the in our black community for real. I grew up on the TV shows. We had you know Family Matters, Fresh Prince. We had all that kind of stuff, and that stuff was like I don't that that was the family that was the family to me. Everything I have now is not necessarily what I thought um, I I would have. But this looks like a TV show. This looks like the life that I have now it looks like the lives that I've I've watched on TV. It's just it's just all real this time. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I want to share this with other people? So somebody else growing up can be like, oh, you know, that guy did that. No, I think I should probably focus on, you know, being a little bit more intentional with my kids too when I have them or being a little bit more intentional with my relationships or my friendships or anything like that. Because that's what this is. You know, I'm not, I'm not very um, showy on, on the internet, on the platform or any of that. Everything mm -hmm. is very simple. 
I live a very simple life. I, I don't do no skydiving. I don't, <laughs> I don't race cars. I got no Lamborghinis or nothing like that. Like in the house, this is what we do. We joke, we talk, we hang out. So it was a personal decision to, you know, put the family out there. But that's the reason why, like people need to see this. People deserve sure. to see this. It's crazy because this is, uh, <laughs> it's funny that you said that because now you are like the TV dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, on, just on the internet. You, you literally are the T and was different now about the internet because I ain't never on TV seen a, a dad like me. Like, <laughs> seen a nigga in my situation. Like, you, oh, don't, right. you don't see baby daddies on TV. It like, just don't, that just don't happen. You see relationships, you see all of that. But on yeah. the internet, you see, we get a bad rap. <laughs> we everywhere. Yeah, we yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And I hate that too, actually, because I, I am so against like certain stereotypes. Like just because a relation, you know, I know I know people put like marriage and kids all in the same category, and I think that that's I understand why they do that, but you can be a sucky husband and be a great dad. Oh yeah, or vice versa. Like those things don't have to live together. I know we've married those things and we put them together, but the real world is those things don't have to be together. Like mm-hmm. you can not like somebody your your baby moms or baby dads but still be an awesome parent. Like those things can live together. And that's why I encourage people to share what they're comfortable with sharing uh, because you don't know how that, that image just resonates with somebody else. You feel me? But with you documenting so much, what, when you look back at it, what's something that you've learned about you or your kids have taught you along the way? Well, the biggest thing I, I learned a lot about my, um, by myself, how I handle situations, mm-hmm. how I process situations. I mean, I, I think um, I have this, uh, I, to- I told my wife I like have a, um, a productivity issue where I feel like if I'm not being productive at every moment of the day, like I feel invaluable or I, I feel non-value. I feel like I don't add any value hmm. because you know, I want to, you know, provide, I need to, you know, manage the relationships that I'm in. I need to be a good friend that takes mm-hmm. work as an adult. That's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> I need to be a good husband. That takes a lot of work. Good father. All of these things I need to be. And if any of those things slip, drop, fall, like I feel like almost everything, everything is over. Like, what am I here for? If I'm dropping the ball on any of these situations now, what I'm still, I'm not even going to say I'm over it because I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just not, but, um, that's what I learned. I learned that I do have this kind of productivity issue that needs to get addressed. Do I really need to fill up every day with, you know, something Stuff, yeah. that moves that in my head that moves us forward, you know, vacation, any, anything. And I'm looking at that as I, you know, scroll through the page. I'm looking at it as I'm kind of living like, okay, I get up at four in the morning so I can do this back to back to back and all this kind of stuff. So I've learned that productivity is not the the end of it. And I'm trying to learn to uh, kind of be okay with some things not being okay. And some things there, there being gaps in spaces or you having time to kind of relax <laughs> or sit down and that's 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 what the whole platform is supposed to be about like you know very living the the simple life appreciating the things that are around you but how do you do that when we go back to your first question was like what is a father he manages the situation there's almost no time i don't know how long i'm going to be here for <laughs> i need to get all this information out to everybody that needs it there's this term that i hear often um i heard somebody say like you know make sure you die empty Meaning mm. everything that you have, why? I mean, you don't want to keep it. Talk about it, say it, but leave it out there because once you're gone, there's no, you can't have it. Like, so why wouldn't I want to give it to you? When we have these quite when we have these dialogues back and forth, why wouldn't I want to get my my opinion off to you in the most respectful way possible so that you can get whatever you need out of it? Because I don't need it at some point. You know I me, mean? so that's 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 what I that's what I'm learning, man. He and, hey, AJ, he in his therapist bag right now. <laughs> Nobody asked for therapy, but he giving therapy right now. Let him go. Oh, don't get mad. Hey, don't get mad because hey, he took you, you, asked he, the he took you job. He, he cooking right. Man, shut up. Yes, yeah, hey, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Wednesdays, I'm the therapist. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, yeah, you beat me to it, but it's all right. 
So speaking of, of, of things about, you know, giving the resources out and helping and giving everything out, what advice would you give to a new father that's looking for, you know, I just I just don't know what to do. Like, what are those resources that you use? What were there like YouTube channels? Was there certain things? Was it like, hey, I just watched a bunch of episodes. Of, no, I can't say the Cosby Show now. Well, I still can. Cosby Show, fucking like you know what I'm saying. Like, like I'm I'm more like uh like Chris Rock Daddy on there. Like I'm mm-hmm. I'm tight budget. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like like did you do stuff like that or or what was it? What was your resources that you that you use? Now I love that question. I really do because I know most people might point to some books or they may point to some personalities and I am absolutely not going to do either one of those things. Now, the thing that I think is, is you yourself are the resource. I think something happens when you become like a father, like there's some natural thing that kind of kicks in. Like you may not know what to do exactly, but you know that you'll get there. Like, you know, that there's, you, you know, that it's not the, it's not going to be the end of the world. You just kind of keep going keep trying the best you can. You keep knowing that you're going to just adjust and adjust and adjust. And there's something, there's just something that happens. I don't know. I feel like I knew nothing about kids. The first diaper that I ever changed in my entire life was my kid's diaper. Like I had, I was never around babies or anything, but then once he got here, I got to be like the most confident person. And it's not because I was rehearsing. I was practicing, not because I was talking, but just because I just had a level of, of like, Hey, I need this to happen. He's here now. And, if I mess up, it's okay. I just need to figure it out as we go. I think that and, um, you know, talking amongst other people is a thing, but, but that's kind of a... I'm glad you, I'm glad you got to something that really, ma- really yeah, worked. That, 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 theore- that, that, theore- that, theore- that theoretical... Look, that theoretical... That was look, answer. Hey, <laughs> look within. Look within. We are the answer. Yo, that's crazy. Yo, let, me let, me, let me say subscribe let me to your you. page. Like, I'm on your page or something. Jesus. Like, Yo, look, look within. You are the answer. Man. I help you. But isn't that, isn't that where isn't that where it's supposed to start at? Like, is it okay, don't you think that there's some kind of instinct that kicks in when you become a dad? You're not that's a, you're, that sounds like and then, and then, then you know what you do when you like, man, I need help. <laughs> you go ask for help and they say, Well, go look at yourself. <laughs> go stand in the mirror. Yeah. They ain't never said that now. You made listen, I'm telling you. Yo, I, hey yo, you said that so smooth. It was good. You said it so <laughs> smooth. Help. And I almost was gonna let it ride. Pause. But oh, I <laughs> But yo, I've never said, yo, I don't know how to do this, but I gotta look within and I can figure it out. I've never you said, that. said that. You, you, you absolutely have. have. You that absolutely is have. no. Because if I, I got, I know how to pick up a phone. And be like, yo, you ever seen this? Yo, that is, that is. That's that what I'm saying. Is I mean, a lot of times, I under, I do understand what you're saying. Like, I, you try to shut up, AJ. No, you didn't. But, because he was I over mean, there smirking no, the whole no, time. I, I, do, <laughs> I do, but but once I once I look within, I'm asking for help. First off, <laughs> if I can, we just not use the term "look within" because the other did not use the, the "look within" term. Not right. with, okay, yourself. We, re, re, the, reflect the internal. Said you got reflection, not, in, reflection not, uh, internal. The <laughs> Anthony said you got some instincts that you could rely yeah. on. Now, let's if if we say you got instincts, now you know. No, I agree with t- that though. Right. You know yeah, who yeah. you could talk to. And what I was saying was conceptually, y'all was trying to break it down into the task. Yeah, I would have literal <laughs> answers like I would hit some help. I was looking for some help. He said, "This is for me." Yeah, no, no, not for me. I'm good. I mean, like, hey. Who do y'all I talk need help? To? Y'all can go to the uh, just my baby, uh, just my baby daddy podcast on YouTube. That would be a resource to start. Uh, we can go to <laughs> that, that, that was that was bringing me to my to my second point. Like you do need a community of people. You definitely do. So yeah. like having having the instinct is one thing, but you do need a community of people. You do need somebody to talk to. And your yeah. instinct will tell you who you can talk to in that particular situation. All friends ain't meant for all situations. All right. Not some people you that need to talk so to. <laughs> some people you need to talk to early when that baby like 
couple months. Somebody else you need to talk to in that baby like three, mm-hmm. three. But you need to be going back to your first question. You need to be a manager of that situation. Who can I talk to? And that's why I say your instincts kick in and let you know how you can address these certain situations. That ain't how you phrase that, but I love I love the way you tied it together. That is an amazing story. You hey, look, content. You are amazing at storytelling. I will say that. <laughs> Well, I'm glad. I ho- hopefully, the point got across. <laughs> nah, I was just messing with you. But you know what? I always, you don't normally hear in, in, in today's world, you don't normally hear of the father instinct, but they market the mother instinct. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that is something that I'm glad you said that all without, without joking around because. We as men do have something internally that does kick in if we're actually present fathers. You can tell who has it and who doesn't because everybody doesn't have it. And that's just the reality. But that goes both ways, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The mothers, some it is what it is. But I think we do need to um, highlight more that men do have fatherly instincts. But sometimes what happens is. Another thing that's highlighted is that they don't really get the fair shot, fair shake uh, opportunity to display in the way that's, again, presented to the masses at at large. And so that is kind of really something that we want to. I'm glad you said it. We're going to continue to highlight that and that everyone has different instincts, but everyone has it. So I'm glad you said that, though. Yeah. And um, so. Where that came from, my wife and I wrote a book, and um, you guys can link it if in, in your notes if you like. Um, it's called uh, sure. The Couple's Pregnancy Guide, mm-hmm. and it's a book that is from my perspective, a male's perspective on pregnancy. So... <laughs> well, we gotta, <laughs> this is This is this AJ is you a little late. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. Let me run it. Let me let me tell you guys about this. So, Penguin Random House, um, they came to me and said, "Hey, we want to write a book on 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 pregnancy." And I was like, "You do know I'm a mm. guy, and I can, absolutely can, but there's no way I can write a book like without my wife. Like, there's it takes two of us. Even though you guys probably want my perspective, we both need to write this book. But it goes over. Was well, she already pregnant? No, so we had already had both of our kids at this time. The book came okay, out last. Okay. The book okay, came out okay, last year. Okay, it came, it okay. just came out last year. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so um, they wanted me to just write it, and I was like, "Kind of needs to be both of us." So Rachel and I sat down and we wrote this book. And what it is, it is from my perspective, and it says things like what I was just like what you just pointed out. Like you, you hear about instincts as a mother. But you don't necessarily hear it as a father. Why? I just ain't got no instincts because I didn't. I don't have a baby inside me. That's absolutely false. I can't talk about pregnancy because I didn't have the baby. Absolutely false. I was there. My wife was. I put it in you. What are you talking about? What are we what talking about? I was, I was waiting for that. I was waiting for it. I, I, listen, I knew it was coming. False. <laughs> that was almost perfect. That was almost perfect. <laughs> I did I did I didn't think I didn't know why people would like discount my experience just because the baby wasn't inside me. Like I was there every all the time. I, I slept there, I ate, I fed her, I dealt with her for all this time. Like the experience in a pregnant woman is a like that Another is a job. thing. It it is a thing and our experiences as fathers shouldn't be shouldn't be discounted. So I'm glad that you pointed that out because that's what this book kind of highlights. It looks at a situation from my perspective. How do you build? What What is your duty as a guy? And a lot of the times when it comes to pregnancy, it's just like the guys just kind of wait. Oh, hey, what do you need? Oh, you need something? Okay, I'll do that. Or they're like the help person, the help person, like second mm-hmm. place. My whole thing is like there's no first or second here. Like. You doing your job. You got the baby. You need to do the baby, and I'm managing the whole situation. So in the book, I teach like ownership of the situations. Like you are, you are my wife. This is my baby. I need to figure this stuff out. So you need to sleep on this times. You know, I need to help you navigate mm-hmm. your feelings, and you're all like, I need to own the whole relationship here. And I don't think that um, 
men or women really look at it like that. They don't look at it like, oh, yeah, the father is an integral part of the whole pregnancy, not just like, hey, give me this, hand me this, let me do this. Like the whole situation, I I am there. So I have an experience and I have something to share. And that's what that whole book is about. Tips and strategies um, that you can look within. <laughs> <laughs> to help, to, I told you, you said that before. Listen, I, I, would rec- I would recommend it to people, but I tell you what, my ass ain't going through that shit no more. So uh, I, <laughs> I recommend the book. No, no, it, it makes that it is, makes sense. Is, yeah. Now, the if the, the thing that is good about this book is, even though it's about <clears throat> pregnancy, it is actually about relationships. Like, yeah, the the and I clearly state that in there. Every situation, every chapter. Like it's not about pregnancy. It's about the concept of being with somebody and having like a partnership with somebody. We're just using the baby as a reference for how to work together as a team during pregnancy. But you can apply it to every situation. And that's why I reiterate in the book, there's tons of examples of drawing parallels between regular just relationships if you don't have a kid and relationships if you do have one. Because in my world, they're kind of all the same. It's just what what what's the one thing that's being the one dynamic situation here? And in the book, is the kid. Gotcha. So that's a whole that's a whole another that's a whole episode within itself talking about uh, a man's role throughout the pregnancy. That's oh yeah, a, amen, amen. Oh. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, we're not gonna go down that path. Not, not, no, 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 not right now. It I'm is what it is. Back. But so we talked. <laughs> look, we talked about your book. Talked about. Yeah, AJ called you a YouTube TV star. <laughs> but tell I mean, us about. I didn't say YouTube TV star. I said that's the new version. YouTube hey, look, he been he been throwing a little bit of gas, so I might as well go ahead and gas him <laughs> up a little bit too. So I mean, it is what it is. Par for the course. Good gracious. But anyway, now nah, tell us about create dope humans. <clears throat> yeah, create dope humans, man. I love this concept. Um, we came up I with. I hope it. you do. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming too, right? <laughs> Yeah, man, I had this great idea. <laughs> I mean, I hope so. I just wanted to lead with. I think it. I think it's an awesome idea. Not just. Hey, that was false it, humility, but, but I got you. <laughs> Eli, you funny, my guy. You are underrated. Nah. Now. <laughs> nah, man, stop, man. Go ahead. Create dope humans is this. Um, it's this community of people that that rebel against passive relationships, and they're very intentional with the people that they come in contact with. So collectively as a whole, it's about um, how do you impact the people that you come in contact with? Now, you can take that across the spectrum as a parent. How do you impact your kids? You do that by being you know, there for them. You talk to them. You give them everything that you have. You just have this dire responsibility for your kids. If you're a coach, I see it a lot in coaches. The, the merchandise is very popular with like coaches, psychologists, um, uh, speakers, people that are very driven and driven by other people and want to leave other people with stuff. So Create Dope Humans is about creating that environment of, hey, you can do this because I'm giving you everything that I got. It doesn't matter if you use it or not, but I'm putting it out there and I'm giving you everything that you have. So um, we took that concept and we kind of we put it on, you know, merchandise, we put it on the shirt, hoodies, and it's become a lifestyle. Like you can't you can't wear this and not necessarily really and not not believe the words that it says instantly um when people kind of read the words they know exactly how it applies to their life if they're a guardian a grandparent a parent a coach they say that is for me because they are so passionate that these three words really just attack whatever the situation is that they, they that they have so we take that we've taken this and then we've just launched it and we have our, our page up for it. Uh, we sell this merchandise is up to like 140,000 followers or so on, on that page because people are, they, they resonate with the concept. And I just love that. And it's just like so much hope for, for humanity that these three words people like are just so into. I ain't got nothing to say because no, that's no, super no, dope. That is, it is. Don't steal Stevie Wonder's uh, three words though. Can you, you can't, Please do not put that on the thing. Like these three words change everything, because that would be a a bit lossy, right there. I can see that. I can. I can, I can I see that. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> don't 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 use that. Eli doesn't know music, so he's just lost. <laughs> just continue on. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Eli. 
Hey, look, I'm, the one thing you're not going to do is disrespect me on, on this show. But it is what it is. <laughs> <clears throat> but, um, the sun, shut up. <laughs> you got to sound so serious, too. Nah, 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 nah. See. Yeah. Y'all funny, man. Y'all funny. Look, so listening throughout this conversation, there's a few words that you said repeatedly. Um, that have kind of resonated from managing intentionality. You didn't say intentionality. I just add the ality on the end of it. That, um, let that be. Let the record reflect that. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to <laughs> match the five syllables. I have not many syllables we were talking about earlier. Um, and and um, just listening to you. And looking at the things that you've created along the way, um, from your book to uh, your, your channel um, to create dope humans, um, no pun intended. But what do you ultimately want your legacy as a father to be? The same concept that I have for create dope humans is like the legacy that I want. <clears throat> like with the information that I have, <clears throat> I've <laughs> given everything that I know how to give. And that's what creating dope humans, that's what creating dope humans is. Like giving everything that you have, despite thinking that it's trying to think that it's perfect or trying to perfect it before you put it out. Okay with trial and error and all of that. I think that there's these, um, <clears throat> there's these characteristics that um, make up somebody who create dope humans. It's like optimism, love, and, and commitment. And between those three things, those are the three, those are like the, the pillars of started off as our family that I've shared kind of with everybody. It's the optimism, like to, to make you um, understand that, you know, ex you don't know exactly what's going to happen, but you're, you're hopeful that it's going to happen. And then you're convicted to really help however that you can. And then you have the love that's going to let you do it over and over and over again, even when it don't work. You got to say the same things 27,000 times. I think that right now we're in this, um, at least my generation, <clears throat> we're in this, like, I'm going to call it like a rebuilding kind of phase because we were raised by men who may not have been there, who were raised by men that were there, but didn't necessarily know how to express themselves. So now we're at the first generation that has the information that says we need to be there. And not only do we need to be there, we need to be present. That took mm -hmm. almost two generations for us to realize that. So I know when we talk about legacy, um, we talk about like, you know, generational wealth and, you know, leaving assets and, you know, learning about money because that's what, you know, other cultures do and we should do that. And that should be like a staple. But when we talk about legacy, those characteristics that I just named, like those things need to be the things that, that live on. Those need to be the things that we instill. Those need to be the things that we we are very intentional about because those concepts will help you make all the other decisions about money, about you know love, you know phrasing people, you know whatever it is. Those three those three words that I that I share with you guys, like those are the backbones of it all. And if you can lean on those, everything else should be should be fine. So that's that's what I want my legacy to be. No, nah, that's dope. But couldn't have said it any better because one thing that I've seen from this conversation is that patience is something that we all need um, in the sense that it helps with the communication. It helps with absorbing the questions from the constant bombardment of questions from our children. Um, and then it also gives us the opportunity to reflect assess the situation and then act accordingly. So that's some, mm -hmm. so yeah, I might've, you know, we joke around, but the, the points and some of the concepts that, um, that we've discussed are, are very powerful. And, um, you know, you coming on and sharing that now nah, is greatly appreciated. Oh, no, I appreciate sure. you guys. Any platforms like this, I'm a huge fan of whoever listens to it. I think absolutely is, is, is going to get, is going to get value. I say the same thing, like on my page, like my page is not for everybody. But if you come there, and you're open, you're going to get something out of it. That's going to, that's going to help you. And that is, that is cool. So I appreciate you guys for this, um, for this, this opportunity here, hanging out, talking, let me practice some of my, uh, Barry white no, you ain't doing <laughs> low tone <laughs> voice. You ain't doing that one. We didn't, we didn't let that down. Yeah, we, you'd have got hung up on, uh, <laughs> right? but we're not that gentle. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. <laughs> love, love the timing, bro. Love the timing. <laughs>